Our brain is essential organ which controls everything we do day by day. And to keep brain functions normal, there is need in constant blood supply. So today we'll talk about cerebral blood flow and of course its auto regulation, which is possible in a normal and integrated tissue. And of course, sometimes where we have some damages of the brain or blood a barrier. Cerebral blood flow is a blood supply to the brain in a given period of time, and it is typically 750 milliliters per minute, or 15 to 20 percent of the cardiac output. It's about one fifth of the cardiac output, so it is considered a vital organ of the body. There is a little bit difference in uh, cerebral blood flow to the white and gray matter. And as you see, for example, for white matter, it is 20 and for gray matter, it is 80 milliliter per minute per 100 gram of tissue. And the mean of these two different uh, types of matter represent a 40 milliliter per minute per 100 gram of tissue. So variations can vary from 10 to 300 milliliter per minute per 100 gram of tissue, depending of course on metabolic activity of the brain. If cerebral blood flow is low, like less than 20 or less than 25, there can be find, uh, founded some uh, changes like cerebral impairment or isolated electroencephalography. And for less than 10 milliliter per minute per 100 gram of tissue, we can find irreversible neural injury. An average perfusion of 50 to 54 milliliters of blood per 100 gram of tissue of brain tissue per minute. It is considered average and cerebral blood flow is tightly regulated to meet the brain's metabolic demand. Many factors can determine cerebral blood flow and they are viscosity of the blood, it depends mostly on erythrocyte count, how blood vessels are dilated and arterial blood pressure. So this Two components are uh, closely related because the diameter of the vessel is regulated when uh, blood pressure is high and it is a component of the vessel, there is vasoconstriction and when vasodilation occurs, there is a low blood pressure. If it is influenced by cardiac output or the heart rate, it, it could be in a different, different way. The net pressure of the flow of the blood into the brain, or also known as CPP or cerebral, blood, cerebral perfusion pressure, which is defined by form formula like mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure. And it should be above 50. Intracranial pressure should not be uh, above 15, as it is considered a high intracranial pressure. So by formula, for example, if mean arterial pressure is 65 and this one is 15 as normal, so we have this 50 milliliter of mercury of mean arterial blood pressure. Let's talk about control of cerebral blood flow, which is considered in terms of the factors affecting cerebral perfusion pressure and the factors affecting CVR, which is uh, cerebral vascular reactivity. These factors are metabolic control or metabolic autoregulation. Sympathetic nervous activity and cardiac output, this one is influencing cardiac output. On a high activity, cardiac output usually is increased which have a formula like heart rate and stroke volume. And pressure autoregulation. Chemical control bar, by arterial gases or carbon dioxide and oxygen, as you see per these graphs or graph, you can see that increase in uh, 
carbon dioxide pressure will, will uh, increase a cerebral blood flow by vasodilation, which is uh, indirectly proportional with oxygen, where oxygen, when oxygen is uh, high, pressure of oxygen, there is decrease of cerebral blood flow. Anesthetic drugs, neural control and temperature. Let's talk forward about this. So cerebral blood flow out regulation remains constant despite varying perfusion pressure or cerebral perfusion pressure. As you see formula, mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure or central venous pressure, which is higher, you can put this in uh, putting this side of the formula, intracranial pressure or uh, central venous pressure. Normal IOT regulation limits are within 50 to 15, 115 milliliter of mercury. Cerebral uh, blood flow is maintained constant bar by variable vascular diameter changes. Cerebral blood flow and temperature variations. Hypothermia decreases metabolic demand. Changes within uh, seven, five to seven percent of cerebral blood flow per one grade of Celsius, Celsius shift up or down. For example, at temperature uh, 27 to 37, there is a 50 percent decrease in a uh, in a demand or in a metabolic demand at 20 grade of Celsius electroencephalographic activity become isoelectric as well at high temperatures like more than 42 a uh, neural cell injury may occur so pay attention for this fever or high temperature correlation between cerebral blood flow and volatile anesthetics as well as intravenous. Cerebral blood, uh, volatile anesthetics lowering uh, metabolic demand, producing vasodilation and are called luxury perfusion. In times that uh, intravenous anesthetic are doing the same except ketamine, so they are decreasing metabolic demand, cerebral blood flow decreasing and one important fact is that cerebral iot regulation remain intact. intact. In times that ketamine increases cerebral blood flow, look at this line, increases cerebral blood flow and causes vasodilation, activation of limbic system and midbrain, depression of somatosensory and auditory cortex, no change in cerebral, blood, cerebral spinal fluid production but instead reduced absorption of it or reabsorption, and a ketamine appears not to increase intracranial pressure with concomitant uh, propofol administration or mix it in one syringe, which is done very often. And the last slide is with cerebral metabolic rate or demand. So brain consumes 20% of body oxygen or 3 to 5 milliliter per minute per 100 gram of brain tissue. More than 60% is used to generate ATP. And gray matter consumes more than white matter. Important to know that brain has no oxygen reserve or deposition. If cerebral blood flow is zero or uh, cystated, then unconscious coming in 10 seconds. If you are compressing carotid arteries bilaterally. In 10 seconds, without removing your uh, fingers, patient can become unconscious. So ATP depletion coming within three to eight minutes. Cortex and hippocampus are most sensitive to hypoxia. Glucose correlation with uh, cerebral metabolic rate. Glucose is a primary source of energy. And during starvation, Acetoacetate and beta oxybutyrate becomes the main source of energy or ATP. Hypoglycemia lead to neural malfunction, which may become irreversible depending on duration, and hyperglycemia lead to exacerbation of global or focal brain injury.
may worsen cerebral acidosis. So for this reason, glucose or dextrose 5% or 40% are avoided during ictus or any of the cerebral injury. Thank you very much and have a great time. Hope this video is useful for you and changing your vision about uh, cerebral blood flow.